Hello, yogis. I'm Lizzie Lassiter. Delighted that you're here with me. Hopefully, you found this video through my newsletter, Rest with Lizzie Lassiter, weekly content and encouragement to slow down and practice restorative yoga. So today, I thought we would talk about creativity, which is one of my passions. Little known fact, I have a master's degree from Columbia University in New York City in architecture. Creativity, my thesis for today's class, is that creativity is about intuition plus iteration. So intuition is a kind of instinct, a feeling that we have, often nonverbal, about what we should do. And Iteration means doing it over and over and over again. So I was just listening to this podcast. I'll link below this YouTube video. It was an episode with Rick Rubin, the music producer, and Andrew Huberman, who is a professor at Stanford University. And they were talking about creativity and talking about how the brain is inside the skull, but the nervous system, much of the nervous system, of course, as we know, extends throughout the body. And that the body is actually a vast collector of information. And that, of course, got me thinking about yoga as a modality to train our creativity in that we are training our intuition and that we are actively listening to the body, listening to the signals from the nervous system. It's a form of bodyfulness, we could call it, and allowing the yoga mat to become a space where we train this intuition plus iteration and where we cultivate our most creative selves. So that's what we're gonna be playing with today on the mat. As I guide you, we'll start with a supported back bend. It'll be a little bit of slow flow, and then we'll end with a longer restorative pose. Good. This video is brought to you by <laughs> product placement. You're going to need an eye cover, and the best possible eye cover, I could imagine, is one of my third eye masks. They are currently available on my website, www.lizzy.yoga, in this sage color. This is what... I have right now in stock and they have this sterling silver um, button that I designed that uh, was first 3D printed, 3D prototyped, and then it's made in sterling silver and attached here for the third eye mask. Okay, comes with a little bag as well. You're gonna take a blanket and fold it up. I'll show you the specific fold that I suggest. Um, this fold is also in mom's book, Restore and Rebalance, mom's restorative yoga book. So it looks like this, folded in half. And we're gonna use the more organized edge to lie over. If you So if you didn't have a blanket like that, what you could use would just be a pillow like so, sort of that shape that you would use on your back to lie over. The idea here is gentle back bending. So we are opening the front body here. You sit in front of your support. You lie yourself. Oh, gently back. Seems like nothing. But when we stay for a few minutes, it feels like a lot more than nothing. Oh, I've forgotten my timer. <laughs> Okay, so I'll set a timer for all of us. We'll stay for five minutes of silence in the pose. This is called One Blanket Backbend. It's pose number eight in Mama's book, Restore and Rebalance, in case you're following along at home. Okay, so five minute timer starts now. And we settle back down and in to the body. Cover your eyes. Soften your chin by lengthening the back of your skull. Open the arms wide. The feet are wide as well and the knees are together.
listening here to the sensations in your body, the sensations that accompany relaxation. And opening yourself up to any other information that might arrive. Inhale your breath. Exhaling. Roll yourself to the side. Pausing here. And press yourself up. Mm. Take a moment, 
Elevate your pelvis slightly. Let's sit. Two, listen to your heart. And noticing, if you can, with a single word, summarize the interior state of your body right now after just five minutes of stillness. I feel unwound in the best sense, unclenched, unrolled, unbound, expansive. And on your next inhala inhalation, open the arms, keep them up and over the head, and exhale. Come down to the heart. Inhale, a couple more rounds like this. Letting the shoulder blades move and fly up. Exhale. One more time, inhale. So I would like to do a twisted side extension over a bolster, if you have a bolster, over a firm pillow, if you don't. So the idea is to stretch and lengthen that side body, the fascia, you're going to sit in front of your bolster and reach up and over. So let's do the right side first. Your right side is down towards the bolster. The right knee is bent. The left leg is stretching out and slightly behind you. You can gently take a hold of your left wrist and lengthen here. And there's a lot to feel. If you roll back, you can feel a stretching all through the abdominal wall. And as you roll slightly forward and twist and lengthen, you can feel the stretch to the side body. Make sure you're pressing back strongly through that great leg heel. Every pose needs an anchor and that heel is the anchor of this pose. Mm. And then keep rolling so your heart begins to turn towards the mat. One more breath here. And roll all the way onto your belly. Come onto your elbows here. So you're supported and lifted up by the bolster or the pillow. My legs are as wide as they want to be. They might be as wide as the mat. And then it's like sort of a supported cobra pose. Lift up any amount. And exhale. Moving with the breath a few more times. Inhale, adjust so that your front hip points are comfortable. Exhale. You might want to go a little bit off the straight, go off the straight and narrow, off the rectilinear version of the pose with a little sahaj. And exhaling, and I'm sort of rotating and lifting asymmetrically. I turn the head. And exhale. Last couple of rounds, you might want to. Now I'm going to bend my right knee as I press more strongly into the left hand. Turn away. Left knee. 
simply exploring here, your pose, your slow flow might look very different than mine. In fact, I hope you have your eyes closed as much as possible. Oh, exhaling last time. And really come onto the other side for the side extension over the bolster. Lift up the left arm up and over. The left knee is bent. The right heel is extending away from my body. And I look for the length here. Staying close to the breath. Mm. And come back to hands and knees. You know what we're doing. Cat cow can't resist. Exhale. Drop the head, lift the belly. Inhale. Lift the heart. One of the most nutritious movement pairs for your vertebral column. One more round like this. And inhale. And now just as we did with the cobra, the supported cobra, go a little bit off kilter here, off book. Cooking without a recipe, just finding what feels good. Lifting back and forward, left to right, spiraling. Swaying in the hip joints. Feeling the shoulder blades slide along the back body against the rib cage. And, mm, coming back to neutral. Let's do a supported bridge pose now. This is a restorative yoga pose. I'm going to use the bolster really simply. It's a single prop restorative. Um, if you don't have a bolster or if the bolster is too high for you today, if it feels too strong, then I suggest you roll, you fold a blanket and you can even do this pose with a single blanket. Actually, it feels great. I'll show that first. Uh, you just take a blanket and you fold it so it's like long and skinny this wide. And it's going to lay down along the spine. And what I'm looking for is an opening. The, the edge of the prop, whatever you're using, blanket or bolster, is at the lower tip of the shoulder blade. So this is kind quite similar to the first pose we did if you just use a single blanket. In terms of the amplitude, the kind of intensity of the pose. Um, but you could do it with a bolster. If you have a choice, use a rectangular bolster here. Um, you sit on the bolster. And actually, I'm going to put this blanket on top of my knees, which feels really nice. Um, my eye bag at the ready. Set a little timer for us. I'm going to do seven minutes. But if that's too much for you, you're gonna stop <laughs> and come down 
at any time. You're gonna move in the direction of your head to come out. So this is a supported bridge pose. This little move is really nice to drag your wrist away from the back body. And you let your, should we just scoot a tiny bit towards my, you're really hanging C7, C1. The base of the neck is absolutely lifted. My shoulders are just lightly touching the mat. Hmm. The eyes are covered. This is absolutely a strong trigger for the nervous system to move into parasympathetic dominance when the head is below the heart. And a great space for listening, for opening up to intuition. If you're not comfortable, make a change or come out. We'll practice in silence together for a few minutes.
Inhale the breath. Exhaling. Begin to unwind yourself from the pose by moving in the direction of your head. So I'm going to press gently into my feet, slide the bolster. And behind me and roll myself down. Then I pause here. Roll yourself to the side. Mm. Mm. So my plan is to do one more back bend. But before we do, I thought we would do a supported pigeon pose which I love. We've already got the bolster here. So, pigeon is a hip opener. I'm gonna take a block as well to support my head. Place the bolster across your mat. This might be too much for you. If it is too much for you, then you can practice without the bolster. I think the bolster makes it a little bit easier, actually. So I'm, what I want is my front shin to be parallel to the bolster. And then I begin by lifting up. I just think this position, this beginning of pigeon always feels so dignified in the body. A sense of nobility or embodying a sense of pride and then exhale and this is a sense of as we bow forward a sense of humility come down onto your elbows if you can i like to support the head take a few breaths here Feeling as we move through the practice. Perhaps you can feel that your nervous system is slowing down. That you feel less frantic or scattered. For me, it's a sense that I'm able to focus with more interest and less distraction on the breath. Let's take three more breaths here. And take the second side, gently come up. And switch to the left foot. So I'm really sitting on the bolster. My front chin is parallel to the front of the mat. Begin by lifting up on the fingertips. Breathing in that sense of dignity and exhaling humility as you bow the head and come down onto your support, your elbows, your block. The back toes are turning under and in. And bring your attention now to the breath.
Two more breaths. And inhale your way back up. I'm going to back leg around to the front and you're sort of in a squat. You land in a squat and I'll turn a little bit to the side so you can see. And it land in a squat here. Mm, let your elbows press gently out and your palms are together. And exhaling, come up to Uttanasana. Bow the head. Feet are wide. We'll stay here a few breaths. See if you want to shift your weight left to right, front to back. And hello to those hamstrings. We didn't do really any forward bending in today's practice. Worked on the kind of slightly active and then supported back bends. And inhale, press into the feet, come all the way up, palms together, and exhale. Okay, we're going to move to the wall for our final pose, Eagle World. I don't know what this shirt means. <laughs> I got it at a thrift shop in Portugal, and I got it. It makes me smile every time I put it on. Okay, we're moving to the wall. So I will pause for a moment and we'll meet you there. And we're back at the wall. We're gonna start with a half dog pose and then supported legs up the wall to conclude our practice today. So uh, come to the wall and make an L shape. Press your palms against the wall. The legs are straight, the head is soft and you're pressing the palms moving the hips towards the center of the room. Be mindful not to hang here in the shoulders if you're quite flexible. And if you're more tight, the work for you here is to try to tip the pelvis. So you're trying to get some length in the hamstring. One more breath. Come up to standing. Okay, here's the setup. You have a bolster, a little ways from the wall, depending on the size of your bum, but definitely not right next to the wall. Then you have a long fold blanket here. That's kind of the basics, eye cover and a blanket wrapped around your feet. I also love to use a sandbag on my feet, which I will show you today, in case you have the privilege of living with a sandbag, owning a sandbag. That weight just feels really nice, actually on the sacrum on the lower back. This pose is not for you today if you are pregnant or bleeding, like first couple of days of your cycle, I don't practice inversion. We'll stay for 15 minutes, but if you need to come down before, listen to your body. This is a practice about intuition. Trust yourself. And as an alternative, if this isn't the right pose for you today, I would just take a Shavasana. Lie flat, support the knees, the ankles, something under the head, cover the eyes, cover up, be warm. All right, so I'm going to roll myself onto the bolster. This is a slight back bend because the pelvis is elevated and the tailbone is dipping a little bit down. I'm gonna just put my third eye mask at the ready. I like to practice this pose with really warm socks because of the inversion, you kind of, the blood begins to come down out of the feet. So I have a stolen pair of socks from my partner. <laughs> Those are the warmest <laughs> stolen socks. And then um, take a blanket 
and wrap it around. So this does two things. It's kind of the padding against the wall and the warmth. Wrap it around. Um, you can also use, a lot of people teach us with a strap. You can also, of course, use a strap around. It's not really to hold the feet, to, the legs together. It's to keep them from falling apart. Now, I like to put a sandbag. I think this is maybe five kilos, 10 pounds, something like that. Rocks. And then I sit like this. Oh, so nice. So nice. Set a timer for us. I'm going to set it for 15 minutes. If your feet fall asleep, you need to come out. So that's kind of your own personal timer. But we'll stay collectively for about 15 minutes. Enjoy. This is the last restorative pose of our practice today. Perhaps the last pool of silence that you will enjoy today. Let yourself breathe into this spaciousness. What a gift. What a luxurious gift. Lie here knowing, not just feeling, but knowing that you are safe and you are held. And you are allowed to rest. You deserve to rest. This type of work is, of course, Swadhyaya, self-study, introspection. It's for ourselves, but it is absolutely for those people that we live and work and are in community with. Hmm. We'll enjoy the silence together and then I'll bring us back and say goodbye.
Gently bend your knees, letting the feet slide down the wall. Roll yourself to the side. Press yourself up to sitting. What a pleasure it is to share this practice with you. Inhaling, open the palms away from the body. With an exhalation, bring them together in front of your heart. Namaste. May we live like the lotus at home in the muddy walk. If you would like to learn to teach restorative yoga, we run about one online training a year. You can go to lassiter.yoga to find out when the next one starts. Other than that, take care of yourself. Subscribe to my newsletter, lizzie.yoga, www.lizzie.yoga. That's where all the good stuff is. Lots of love.